Hey everyone, it's 2013. Let's make a StarCraft 2 map. It's been a while, hasn't it? We have Heart of the Swarm coming out in March, but we're not quite there yet, so for the time being, all we have to work with is what's in this map editor. So I've been thinking, this whole modern warfare theme is sorta kinda getting old. I'm sure a lot of us are starting to get tired of hearing about Call of Duty or Battlefield 3 or Medal of Honor. So that brings us to the topic of this episode, changing the design direction. Now, if you're making a game, why would you ever change the design direction? When you do this, you basically throw away hundreds if not thousands of hours worth of time and effort, and that's just a waste. Why would you ever do this? Well, there are a few reasons. For one thing, you may run into some unexpected events. Maybe you're licensing content and that license was pulled, so you can no longer use any of the characters or stories or any other assets based on that license. You might also have some personnel change around, like maybe somebody was removed from the development team, or maybe something happened to them. Maybe they were a key part of that design, so you no longer have the right person for the job, Things have to change in order to keep going. Another reason would be a change of interest. Maybe the developers are no longer interested in where the game is going. And this actually happened with one of my favorite games in particular, Resident Evil 2, or Biohazard 2, depending on where you are in the world. What happened here was, there was originally a character named Elsa Walker, who was a college student on vacation in Raccoon City, the game was around 80% done when the game director, Shinji Mikami, decided that he didn't like where the game was going. So the game was scrapped and restarted. Elza Walker was eventually replaced with Claire Redfield, and Resident Evil 2 became the game we know of today. I'd say this was a good call to make. Another example of this would be Rise of the Triad. Originally, this was supposed to be an expansion pack to Wolfenstein 3D. But id Software cancelled the project because they wanted people to focus on Doom. Instead of becoming an expansion pack, Apogee decided to change the game into something original. Nothing too big, just a few simple tweaks here and there. The Nazis were replaced with members of a deadly cult, for example. But you still had things like MP40s, so there's still lots of remnants of Wolfenstein 3D in there. There's actually many more examples of this. Games that come to mind are Borderlands, Bioshock, Splinter Cell, even Team Fortress 2 had a change in direction. So with all of this in mind, let's go back to Deep Blue. I've decided to change Deep Blue because I lost interest in the modern warfare theme. Of course, no one should be surprised at this. So instead of this map being based off of modern warfare, we're going to change it into sci-fi mech warfare. Yeah. I actually got this idea after playing a little bit of Mech Warrior Online. I haven't played this game too much, but just a little bit to decide that this is awesome. We should do this instead. But it's nothing like what you see here. A better example would be Mech Warrior 3050 on the Super Nintendo. It's on a top-down perspective, you get multiple weapons, and it's basically the same controls as in Deep Blue. So this would be somewhat of a representation of what I'm trying to accomplish here. And of course, Deep Blue is still early in development, so this can be easily changed because there's really not too much you can change. But unfortunately, some of our work has to be thrown out the window. The reloading system is now useless. We still need ammo for some of the weapons, but we will never be reloading any of them. So this will be removed by the next episode. The accuracy and recoil systems are still usable, but it's no longer a focus of the gameplay. What I originally intended for the weapons was for players to be able to control the recoil so that their shots will go where they want it to go. But instead of a soldier holding a rifle, you now control a battle mech. This would obviously have computers on board to assist with aiming, so there really shouldn't be a lot of recoil. There is still some level of accuracy and recoil, but it's not a major focus of the gameplay anymore. Instead, players will be focusing on their combinations of weapons. This, along with other elements, will be discussed in later episodes.
To start with the changes, let's do the player model first. Here, we'll be toying around with the actor. This is actually very simple. Under the Art tab, we have a drop-down called Models. We change this from a Marine to a Goliath. It's actually very simple, though I did have problems trying to find this the first time around. Like with everyone else, I'm still learning how to use the map editor. Next, we need to change the recoil and the magazine capacity. Some of the values you see here are useless now, so these will be removed in the next episode. But for now, we're just going to be changing the things that we do need. We modified the max ammo and the base recoil for the weapon. We also changed the name in the description because these will eventually be used in the tooltips. Now all that's left is to try this out inside the game. So, this guy is kinda walking weird. Every time I strafe and shoot, it looks like he's walking forward even though he's moving side to side. As for the accuracy bar, this is no longer necessary so we need to get rid of that because, as you can see, the shots are fired in a very tight cone so we no longer have to worry about accuracy. Some of you are probably asking, why is this mech only firing one weapon? Well, first of all, that's a very good question, and I'm glad you asked. The map is still using the old weapon system, that is, one primary weapon, one secondary weapon, and something else that I forget. It's no longer relevant. So what we need to do is change the map so that you can have multiple weapons at the same time. I would like to be able to switch weapons similar to the Mech Warrior games. So in one group you would have missiles, in another you'd have lasers, and then in another group you'd have machine guns. So when you fire them, it fires off a volley of all of those weapons in that single group, and then while those weapons are on cooldown, it automatically switches to the next group, and then to the next group, and then so on and so forth until it gets back to the first group which is ready to fire again. And that is exactly what we will be doing in the next episode of Deep Blue. We will be implementing the weapon system. Of course, it's no fun if there's just one weapon to use. So we will also be implementing more weapons. Missiles and lasers. Just some of the basic weapons. There will be much more to come in later episodes. But until then, look forward to it.